Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T, and I hope you guys are having a great day. If you're new here, welcome. Let me just ask that after listening or watching this video, you find you enjoyed it or you learned something from it, please do me a favor, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Now let's get started. Today, I wanna to talk about the sharp edged object that was used in this horrific crime of the four University of Idaho students. I heard clinical psychologist, Dr. Gary Bucato on the Surviving the Survivor podcast say that this weapon is key to the crime. And we know that a sharp edged object is considered an intimate weapon, something that allows the perpetrator to be up close and personal with his or her victims. From what I've learned, it sounds like the average perpetrator isn't going to grab a sharp edged object as a first choice, though. It's easier, less physical, and more impersonal to use something with bullets. But that makes a loud, distinctive sound, which is a disadvantage if other people are around. In the Delphi case, We've heard that the perpetrator used a firearm as leverage to get the girls to comply with his orders and to force them to the location where the crime occurred. But ultimately, Bridge Guy chose a sharp-edged object to harm the girls. Why is that? Was it only because he needed to be quiet as other hikers were in the area? Or was it both for its silence and because he's into something called peakerism. I think the latter, and that well may be the case in this Idaho crime too. The weapon was chosen for its silence, its personal intimate nature, and maybe the perpetrator's proclivity for peakerism. If you've never heard of peakerism, allow me to briefly define it. The noun peakerism comes from the French verb piquer, which means to prick. Picarism is a blank interest in penetrating the skin of another person with sharp objects, which could include pins, razors, or worse. I've used the blank because YouTube doesn't like the word that belongs there. That word begins with an S and ends with U-A-L. Picarism is also a paraphilia or perversion, as well as a form of sadism. Some people are so into picarism that they take it to the extreme and jab other people to do them in. For these individuals, jabbing, cutting, and even biting others allows them to achieve physical arousal and satisfaction. Among the well-known serialists who were into peakerism are Soviet serialist Andrei Chikatilo, Britain's Jack the Ripper, and American serialist Albert Fish. Andrei Chikatilo, why do some of these names have to be so complicated? Who was nicknamed the Butcher of Rostov, the Rostov Ripper and the Red Ripper was impotent and could only achieve arousal through jabbing his victims with a sharp edged object. This monster did in at least 52 women and children between 1978 and 1990. And remember Jack the Ripper, who committed his crimes in 1888 in London? Dr. Robert D. Keppel an American detective who was known for investigating serialists Ted Bundy and Gary Ridgway concluded that Jack's victims displayed the signature characteristic of peakerism. American serialist Albert Fish, too, is said to have engaged in peakerism on his victims and also on himself. Fish often attacked his own body with a nail-studded board. Dr. Phil, who often does shows on crimes that have caught the public's attention, aired an episode recently on the case of the four Idaho students. One of his guests was criminologist Dr. Casey Jordan. Jordan said of the perpetrator, to go in and get out, 
to take the knife with him and leave no trace because we're going to come up on a month very soon with no suspects. What stands out the most is that I would have guessed this was inner circle, somebody who knew these girls. I think Kaylee and Maddie were probably the targets if it was indeed targeted. And I would have thought that they would have a suspect by now, that they would have had an arrest by now. And as time goes on, Dr. Phil, I am more and more convinced that this could be a random stranger, something like the Gainesville Ripper that we saw in Florida 30 years ago. As time passes, the odds of that being true do increase, end quote. So Dr. Jordan is saying that as time goes by and no one within the student's orbit has yet been arrested, it becomes more likely that this crime could be the work of a random serialist. Of course, such a conclusion goes against the crime being targeted against some or all of the four students. And it then doesn't explain why two of the roommates were spared, unless, of course, the random serialist didn't notice their ground level bedrooms. But that also doesn't make sense because while it appears the perpetrator likely entered the home through the rear sliding glass doors, the front door was wide open at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. This would indicate the perpetrator exited through the front door. Did he not look around and see those extra doors on that level? Was he in a hurry at this point? Was he physically depleted at this point and not able to go after two more people? Or did he really just target those four students? Or is it possible that his sharp-edged object had broken off at that point and was no longer effective. So could this be the work of serialist? All signs now seem to be pointing in that direction, despite the bedrooms in which the attacks occurred being described by the coroner as messy. The perpetrator appears to have been very efficient. The cops are saying the crime went down sometime between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. In that time, the perpetrator took four lives using that sharp-edged object. That takes strength. Such jabbing can hit bone and cartilage. It's not all smooth sailing. Kaylee's mother, Christy Gonsalves, also stated in a recent interview that the perpetrator got in and got out. So this person was fast, and he appears to have known exactly what he was doing. He jabbed the key places, concentrating on the upper chest areas. This indicates some proficiency in this act. We've also been speculating that the perp did not track blood outside the two bedrooms because the surviving roommates did not realize a crime of this nature and magnitude had occurred. That would indicate that when they woke up and left their bedrooms, they didn't see any red stuff. So whoever did this seems to have managed to keep the mess inside the bedrooms. This indicates a degree of skill and sophistication. This, in turn, points at someone who's done this before. And while there are definitely suspicious-seeming characters within the student's social circle and neighborhood, more and more it does feel like the work of a serialist. The perpetrator of this crime has been said to have used a K-bar, sharp-edged object. The coroner stated that all the victims had multiple wounds. Victim Kaylee Gonsalves' father has said that his daughter had more serious injuries than her best friend, Maddie Mogan. He also described those injuries as tears, Mr. Gonsalves also graphically stated that Kaylee's liver and lungs were slashed. Could this indicate that the perpetrator is into peakerism? Could this be the work of an established serialist or maybe a budding one? Could it be an incel, an involuntary celibate looking to satiate himself and fulfill his physical desires and fantasies? Yes, Yes and yes. Also on Dr. Phil's panel was former FBI special agent Jonathan Gilliam, 
who said that a K-bar is one of the cheaper sharp-edged objects on the market. So this person may be someone who doesn't have a big bank account, which led Gilliam to conclude this could be a younger individual. Gilliam also thought that a real professional would not have used a K-bar. Per Gilliam, a professional would likely have a more expensive variety. Gilliam said that when he was in training, his platoon was issued a K-bar, and as soon as they got out of training, they all went out and bought other higher quality sharp-edged objects. Per Gilliam, K-bars are thick, and they don't hold an edge well. Gilliam said that over the course of jabbing four human beings, the perpetrator likely hid bone and cartilage. This would quickly dull the K-bar so that you would probably see a progression of smaller and smaller wounds or wounds not as deep. The penetration just wouldn't have been as good. This could be another explanation for why some of the students were said to have more serious, larger wounds. Acclaimed forensic coroner Joseph Scott Morgan was also on the show and he said that from a forensic standpoint, if four people are jabbed in rapid succession, the person who's jabbed first is going to have the most wounds and the deepest wounds. You can also tell who the first victim was because provided the same K-bar was used on all four victims, that first victim will not have any of the other three victims' DNA on them. As the perp moved from victim one to victim two, he would be taking DNA from victim one to victim two. Then he'd be taking DNA from victims one and two to victim three. And finally, he'd be taking DNA from victims one, two, and three to victim four. That's another way to figure out who was harmed first, second, third, and fourth. Gilliam also shared that K-bars are prone to breaking off, and there's also a guard on them that in a frenzied attack is very likely to injure the person doing the jabbing. I think by saying guard, Gilliam was referring to the hilt or grip. This is what we've all hoped happened, because that would mean the perpetrator likely left ample DNA behind. Morgan jumped in to say that it's possible that if the tip of the K-bar broke off, then parts of the metal may be embedded in the victims, and these metallic bits could somehow be used to trace the weapon and then ultimately the perpetrator. Let's hope that between the DNA found at the home, any metal bits recovered from that sharp-edged object, and that white Hyundai Elantra that the police are working their way closer to catching this monster. I don't know about you guys, but wouldn't it be the best gift the families, the friends, the students, the Moscow residents, and the true crime community could get this year for the holidays? Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories. Did you enjoy this? Did you learn something? Do you know what peakerism is? If so, smash that like button.